And that she, he shall stand at the latter day upon the earth. And though after my skin worms destroy this body, yet in my flesh shall I see God, whom I shall see for myself, and mine eyes shall behold. not another. We brought nothing into this world and it is certain that we can carry nothing out. The Lord gave the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Lord, let me know mine in and the number of my days. that I may be certified how long I have to live. Behold, thou hast made my days as it were a span long And my age is even as nothing in respect of thee. And verily every man living is altogether vanity. For man walketh in a vain shadow and disquieteth himself in vain. He heapeth up riches and cannot tell who shall gather them. And now, Lord, what is my hope? Truly, my hope is in thee. Deliver me from all mine offenses and make me not a rebuke unto the foolish. When thou with rebuke does chastise man for sin, Thou makest his beauty to consume away, like it were a moth fretting the garment. Every man, therefore, is but vanity. Hear my prayer. If thine ears consider my calling, hold not thy peace at my tears, for I am a stranger with thee and a sojourner at all my father's word. 
Oh, spare me a little, that I may recover my strength before I go hit and be no more seen. Lord, thou hast been my, our refuge from one generation to another. Before the mountains were brought forth, or ever the earth and the world were made, thou art God from everlasting in the world without end. Thou turnest man to destruction. And again, again thou sayest, Come again, ye children of men. For a thousand years in thy sight are but as yesterday. Sin that is past as a watch in the night. As soon as thou scatterest them, they are even as sleep. And fade away suddenly like the grass. We are here today to celebrate the life of Miss Alexandria Stevenson, Alexandria. I bring you condolences from Holly Springs Baptist Church to my family. I know many of you over here didn't realize that I was related to you, but yes, I am. I want you to know that you have our blessings, my blessings, 
And if you are in need of anything and we can help you, please feel free to let us know. God has been good to all of us. He has blessed us tremendously. If we would just look around at each other and say, Lord, what a blessing you have been to us. We thank God for the life of Alexandra. We thank God for the family. The family has made out the program, and I'm going to do a roll call to make sure that we have everyone here that's participate, supposed to participate. Paid. I'm sorry. Amen. We have a solo uh, minister. Okay, now, if I pronounce your name wrong, don't throw anything. Amen. Just say, just fix it for me, all right? Yeah. Amen. How do you say that? Latita? Tidia? Leticia. All right. Butler, you here? Yeah. All right. Amen. Reverend Deborah Burns, and I saw you. There you are. Amen. And Ms. Elma Smiley? Oh, right back there. Yeah, I saw you in, out there. Reverend Sammy Burns? Yes, sir. All right. And solo, uh, Mrs. Marsha Campbell, she's here. Amen. All right. Then we have um, Mr. Fred Doug Garrett, Sandra Quillen, Mr. Winston Chandler. No, oh, he's here. LaQuinta Stevens. Well, look, I LaQuinta. I'm sorry, LaQuinta. Amen. You already straightened me out on that one time. Amen. Hey, hey, Stevenson, amen. Amen. Then we'll have readings by uh, Pastor Greer, amen, and selection by the Burns family. Words of comfort, Dr. Edward Brantley. I wasn't trying to insult, amen, uh, uh, your intelligence for his reading is concerned, but just wanted to make sure that I didn't have to get up again. Amen. Until the end. God bless you. Amen, and may heaven continue, amen, to smile upon all of us. Amen. My family, I am praying with us, praying for us, pray our strength in the Lord, because he is the only one we can depend on during these trying times. And I hope this selection bless your heart. Because the Lord is my shepherd, I have everything I need. He lets me rest in the meadow's grass, and he leads me beside the quiet streams. He restores my failing hand and helps me to do what honors him the most. That's why I'm safe. That's why I'm safe. That's why I'm safe. Safe in his arms. Oh, because. 
he's my shepherd I have everything I need He lets me rest in the meadow's grass And he leads me beside the quiet streams He restores my failing hand And helps me to do what honors him the most that's why I'm safe, that's why I'm safe, that's why I'm safe, safe in his arms. Oh, when the storm when the storm oh, of life, of life is raging, of life is raging, oh, and the billows, yeah, 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 they roll, they roll, they roll, oh, oh, oh I so glad that he shall hide me here. I'm, I'm so glad, oh yes, he shall, he shall, he shall hide me. Jesus will rock me in the cradle of his arms when I'm hurting, when I'm sad. Oh, I'm, I'm glad he, he shall. Oh, I, are you glad about it? Are you glad? I'm so glad I'm safe. I'm so 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 safe. Oh, I'm glad I'm safe. I'm so safe. I'm so safe. Right in the palm of his hands. You can be safe in his hands. I said, I'm, I'm so safe in his arms. Amen. Amen. Let's give her another big hand. Amen. God is good. Last time I saw her, she about three, four years old, I think. So. <laughs> Amen. Amen. While uh, Reverend uh, Deborah Burns is coming, there's someone that's driving a Tesla, November Papa, November 509. That's the license plate number. Amen. It needs to be moved. My family, if any of us had our way, we wouldn't be here today. But it's time for everything. In Old Testament, Ecclesiastes, the third chapter first, all the way down, 
to everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven a time to be born and a time to die and a time to plant and a time to pluck up that which is planted a time to kill and a time to heal a time to break down and a time to build up a time to weep and a time to laugh a time to mourn and a time to dance a time to cast the waste stone and a time to gather stones together a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing a time to get and a time to lose a time to keep and a time to cast away a time to render and a time to sow a time to keep solid and a time to speak and a time to love and a time to hate a time of war and a time of peace what profit have ye that work in that that wherein he labored i have seen the travail which god has given to those sons and means to exercise in it he has made everything beautiful in the time also he has set the world in their heart so that no man can find out the works of god make it from the beginning and to the end now new testament the 23rd psalm the lord is my shepherd I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in the green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restored my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thou rod, thou staff, thou comfort me. Thou prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemy. Thou anointed my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall be with us. We will be in the house of the Lord forever. May God bless the hearers of God's word and to our family. God bless you. deepest sympathies to my family and I know some of you wonder I don't know her well Alexandra did she was my family and Billy so that makes us all family and we're all family in Christ Alexandra and I did a lot of work together and uh, we worked very well together but we were very very dear friends and I loved her she didn't ever ask me to do anything in particular for her. Very, not frequent at all, but she did once ask me to learn this song. Never knew why. But we tagged this song as we performed it a couple of times as our theme song. And when I was reviewing the song the other day, I thought, yeah, I'm gonna have to do it because it's, her life, he tells a story, it's my life, and if we all listen, it's going to touch all of our lives. All of us will be able to 
recognize one part of it anyway and um, can feel it for our own lives. So if you'll bear with me, I can hear her playing, so <laughs> give me a minute. Nobody knows the trouble I've seen. Nobody knows but my Jesus. Nobody knows the trouble I've seen. Glory, hallelujah. Sometimes I'm up and sometimes I'm down. Oh, yes, Lord. Sometimes I'm almost to the ground. Oh, yes, Lord, oh, nobody knows the trouble I've seen. Nobody knows but my Jesus. Nobody knows the trouble I've seen. Glory, hallelujah. Sometimes I feel like a motherless child. Sometimes I feel like a motherless child. Sometimes I feel like a motherless child. A long way from home. A long way from home. Sometimes I feel like I'm almost gone. Sometimes I feel like I'm almost gone. Sometimes I feel like I'm almost gone. Way up in that heavenly land. Way up in that heavenly land. Lord, way up in that Heavenly land where I still away, still away, still away to Jesus, still away. Still away home. Ooh, I, I, I ain't got long to stay here.
To my family, I love you. And um, just pray to everybody, just bow their heads right now, and we're going to talk to the Lord. Father God, we thank you for this day, Lord Jesus. And we thank you, Lord, because we know your perfect will has been done. Lord, we do not understand in the flesh, Lord, what you are doing all the time, Lord Jesus. But we can rest assured, Lord, that when your son, Jesus Christ, died on the cross, Lord, he opened up a way for us to get to glory, Lord Jesus. And we can just bank on that, Lord. So, Lord, I pray for our family, for Lord, for that spot that's just missing in our spirits, Lord Jesus, right now today. That spot that we're longing, that love, Lord, that we're going to miss, Lord Jesus, and missing Alexandria, Lord. But we know, God, we know in your perfect will, all things work together for the good of those that love the Lord. So right now, family, we pray that if you don't know the Lord, you find the Lord and you find his relationship and know him that we will all meet again in that great getting up morning. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. I've had some good days. I've had some hills to climb. I've had some weary days.
to the pulpit participants, to friends of the family, to the family, Alexandria and, and, our, sta and our staff. Staff, if y'all please stand for just one second. Alexandra has been a part of our family for over 20 years. She and Miss Curtis Bill used to battle up here. <laughs> Until Miss Miss Bill came off the scene and kind of gave it over to 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 Alexandra. And Alexandra was a consummate professional at all times. And she went, she worked constantly. If it wasn't here, it was at a church, it was some other church, or some um, 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 piano teaching. She even taught my children some. <laughs> but she was constantly working. Um, and when we talk about her piano being silenced, as it says in the poem, I don't think her piano's ever gonna be silenced. But um, while she was here on this earth, as it says in John 9 and 4, you must work the work of him who sent you while it's day. Well, while she was here, she worked that work. She worked that work with dedication. She worked that work with love. And, um, She's gonna be missed. We, Mike and Garrett and Woods, we are grieving here along with the family. But it's gonna be all right, y'all. Because as it says, um, you must work the work of him who sent you while it's day, because that night is coming. And then when that night comes, you'll be able to receive that rest. Alexandra worked for that rest. Every day that she was she was on this earth. So I just want her to get at least one day of rest before she goes around and celebrating around the brown heaven. <laughs> and uh, family, we just want you to know that we love you. We're always here for you. And uh, thank you for sharing her with us. God bless you. Thank you. While Miss Sandra is coming, I'm in the car business here today. There's a blue Jeep Wrangler, Kilo, Kilo November, 549. You in the way. Amen? You need to move your vehicle. Amen. Thank you, family, for allowing me to speak today. Alexander was my, she, we, I, I was her extended family. I met Alexander in the early 90s. My mother 
and my father. Alexander was my sister. She called me her big sister, and sometimes she would call me mommy. And I would tell her, I'm not your mommy. And, you know, and then she would call me 3 o'clock in the morning. And I know when my phone rang 3 o'clock in the morning, it was her. But Alexander loved family. She loved me, and I loved her. And she loved her family. And this is what I want to leave with the family today. <laughs> Love each other. Love on each other. Because the, the next day is not promised to anyone. And when we leave, it's too late. So if you have a sister or a brother, it doesn't matter. Love your family. I love that woman there. I love you too, Quan. Love each other. Love on each other. My sister, where she go? I love her. Just love on your family. Thank you, family. Good afternoon, everyone. I just want to say, I've been knowing Alexander, Miss Stevenson, for years, long before I got married. I met her through uh, one of her students that she was teaching at my church. And when she first met me, the first thing she said, do you have any kids, boy? I said, no, I do not have any kids. Oh, OK, well, I'll talk to you later then. And, and she wa actually walked away. So when I met her again, I had got married. And then she told me, she said, whatever you do, you need to help and have some children. I said, why? She said, because I need to teach them how to play the piano. That's what you do. I need to teach them how to play the piano. And so I said, OK, Miss Stevenson. I said, I will try my best. So years later, I did have a son. And all she kept saying then, I can't wait till he get big enough to sit up on the piano stool for I can work with him and teach him. And then. When he started playing, she started working with him. Then she was coming over to my house. She said, you got to get him a keyboard. I got him a keyboard. Okay. Then she said, oh, he need a piano now. You got to get him a piano. <laughs> so I got him a piano. So then she found out that I played the alto saxophone. So she would come over there and make like she does in the neighborhood, stopping by and tell me to get my saxophone out. But she can play, see what I can play, but she can play along with me. And we done that for a couple of years. Then I finally said, Miss Alexander, let us go to a nightclub and start playing. She laughed so hard. And she said, OK, I'll tell you what, go find the club. Go find the club. I go, I go, knowing she wasn't going to do it. <laughs> so, so I find, so I just make up some name of clubs in Greenville and down in Greenville. She said, oh, I'm busy that night. And then, and how, how much are they paying? I said, it don't matter. We just don't go. We'll set our price. We'll go play it, play for the club. She said, okay. Then she found out, she thought I was serious. And then she finally said, I tell you what, I got somebody that can go play with you. I said, just forget about it. You can't play. I don't want to go, I don't, I don't wanna go play with you at all and stuff. And I know, and then that was my son. He progressed along the way, and he got to be a minister of music at a church in 11th grade. And then she would tell me, when anybody asked you what my boy is doing, you tell them that he's a minister of music at the church. Do not say he play at the church. You say he's the minister of music at the church. And, and she would call me sometimes and say, what's the name of that church that Christian play at? I said, Miss Alexander, I tell her, she said, you wrong. You say he is the minister of music at that church. And, and then if they pause for a minute, you tell them Miss Alexander Stevenson is the one that taught him how to be the minister of music at the church. And I have never seen you in nobody. She laughed all the time. Never said she come and tell me some bad thing people have said about her, this kind of stuff. And I would say, Miss Alexander said, what did you do? She laughed so hard. She laughed so hard. She said, I'm just going to turn over to the Lord. I'm just going to turn over to the Lord. 
And I said, guess what? She said, what? She said, what boo? She said, I got me boo. What boo? I said, I got a phone call last night. She said, from who? I said, from God. I said, God told me to tell you he getting tired of you wearing him to turn everything over to him and stuff all the time. And, and she would just laugh. She would just laugh so hard. I mean, she just laughed so hard. And she said, okay, okay. I, don't know. I ain't going to do it no more. Doing it no more. Very next two days, she calling me, saying something else. I said, I'm not going to worry with the Lord. And I don't want the Lord calling me. So if you don't know how to take up for yourself, defend yourself, sign up for my one-on-one -on -one class, how to defend yourself. And she just laughed so hard. I've never seen no, nobody that laugh so hard sometimes until they start coughing. To give out a breath, she just laughed so hard and said, thing it out. And then, find out, she was, her companion was my cousin. Didn't know that for years. She would tell me about it, but she wouldn't, and she knew we were related. What is his number? You don't need his number. If you got something to tell him, tell me, I tell him. He got something to tell you, I tell you, he tell you, thing it out. And he would, and she, and he would, she, he would bring, she would bring him by my house sometime at nighttime. Tell him to stay in the car. And she would come in the house and stay about 30 minutes or more. And then she said, oh, I'm going to tell you, Billy said not there in the car. I mean, and I go out there, and she said, I ain't got time. I got to go now. Y'all should be talking later. I got to go now. And just be, and just be dying laughing at all at the same time. She's killing herself laughing at the same time. And the thing out. But then at the very end, me not thinking, she called me. Because we've been trying to get in touch with her. Nobody get in touch with her. She said, I'm going to give Billy the phone and let Billy give you his number. And I said, you don't give me the phone? Let, give Billy the phone, let him get in touch with me? She said, yes. And he get, got on the phone, gave his number to me. And I said, Billy, I said, you know she's going crazy. Something don't happen to her. She wants you to give your number to me and stuff. So we laughed about it. Sure enough, God knows best. Two weeks later, no one can get in touch with Alexander. I said, everybody calling me. You heard from me? You heard from me? No, I ain't hearing from me. I said, let me call. And I got Billy number. Call Billy. Billy said, Winston. He said, Alexander is in the hospital. Said she been in the hospital ever since Monday. He said, so, she told me what room she was in and stuff. I said, okay. So that Friday, I went to the hospital, went down the room, nurse at this right here, went to the room to see her. The nurse followed me, you know, waited a few minutes, I got me down. She said, we cannot get her woke today at all. She said, we've been trying and trying, but we cannot get her woke today. I went to the bed. I said, Alexander, she didn't say nothing. I said, Alexander, I said, this is Winston. I said, if you want me to smack that face hard, I said, you will open them eyes because my hand is up in the air and I will smack your face. And she opened her eyes up. And the nurse said, oh, my God, I can't believe it. She said, that's what it took. I said, that's what it take. You have to talk mean to her and she'll understand it. And then I told her, I said, Alexander, then the doctor came in later. He said, you got her woke? I said, yes, sir. I said, I got her woke. He said, well, that's good then. So he has checked her out and examined her and everything and all. And then I said, Alexander, I said, we are going to see the young and the restless. And then I cut the TV on. She laid there with her eyes open the whole time and watched the young and the restless with me and stuff. And I left. Then when, I went to the, when she went to the hospital house, I went down there that Monday. And then I told the same thing, because they couldn't get a walk in. If you don't wake up, I'm going to smack your face. You don't feel it all over your body and stuff. And she opened her eyes up, looked at me, and raised her hand up and caught my hand. And when she caught my hand, she held my hand for an hour and a half. And I could not get a loose from her. The nurses come in there and try to pull my hand out of her hand. I'm telling them, no, no, because her fingernail was digging down in my fingers and stuff. And, and then I started singing. Mariah Carey song to her, I will always love you. And she started shaking her my hand up and down as I sung a song for her and stuff. And after then, about an hour and a half, she just turned it loose. And then that following Wednesday, I went back down there. Billy, me and Billy walked in together. And I called her, told her, wake up then. I was there to see her. She raised up, caught my hand again. And the only time she turned my hand loose when I said, if you let me go, I'll be back to see you. Turned my hand loose, and me and Billy said, cross both your hands over on top of your stomach, and she crossed her hands over there. Then I said, now, nah, if you want me to come back to see you again, you have to tell me goodbye. And she waved by at me and stuff. So I said, God is the only one to know. But I have, I said, I'm going to miss her from calling, 
laughing all the time and never upset with no, no with no, what nobody say. Nothing is good life that laughed all the time. And I, and I said, you know, and she called any time of the night and I'm going to miss her being my paper lady because she would bring me the community paper every weekend, Saturday or Sunday. And if I wasn't there, she'd call me later and tell me when she left out of the garage or inside the house and everything. She would do that all the time and stuff. She would do that all the time. So I'm really going to miss her every day because sometimes we talk to her every day, but every week we talk. I'm really going to miss her. So I said, rest Alexander. Take your peace, honey, and enjoy the rest of your life. Thank y'all. Where do I begin? To my family, thank you. To the funeral home, thank you so much. To everybody that's here, thank you. Let me start there. Growing up with Alexandria, ooh, honey, I can tell you some stories. But we ain't got that long, okay? All right. Growing up with Alexandria, I'm the baby of all a clan of three. My mama was a mess, father was a mess, and they had me and I'm a mess. <laughs> okay? All right. <laughs> so, Alexandria was the one that kept the glue together, told everybody what to do. Me growing up in a household, me being the baby. I got always the short end. Birthdays were short, because I'm in December. And I remember, by me being a winter baby, Alexandra was the one that came and took me to school when I needed to be reprimanded. You know, grades was not right in school. Alexandra was there. I'm going to tell y'all a story. I caught COVID back in 2020. I called Alexandria and told her, I said, Alexandria, my nickname is Suni. That's where everybody called me. My family can tell you. Suni has been my name since I was a baby. I called Alexandria. I said, Alexandria, I'm sick. He said, what's wrong with you? I said, I got COVID. Oh, Lord. You got, you sick? Tell me, what you need from me? I said, well, I don't been to the doctor. They told me the test. They said it was positive. Oh, Lord. And I got to play for these people at the church. I got funerals to do, and you got COVID. <laughs> Lord have mercy. So I told Alexander, I said, well, just come on, bring me some stuff to the house so I can get the feeling bell and be on my way. I'm going to do that, but I ain't coming in. <laughs> Alexander came, y'all. Put the stuff on the porch. Did a knock. That was all I got. Before I could look out my window, I seen the mask, I seen the pocketbook on the arm, going back to the car. I opened up the door, hold up. You ain't gonna come and check on me? Oh, honey, you got COVID. No, ma'am, I can't be sick. No, can't be sick, honey. I can't catch it, I can't afford, I got bills to pay. Do you understand? I got bills. So, I just want to understand, I don't really have the words to understand, let me say that. I'm the last one out of the Stevenson family that's carrying this name. The baby. The last of the Mohican. Okay? My family, I'm going to miss them. Alexandra, I'm going to miss the most because that was my rock growing up as a child. From the whippings taught me everything. I'm going to miss Alexandra calling me for the plates. Sister, what you don't cook? I don't cook some turkey wings, macaroni and cheese. Oh, I'm coming to get a plate. This service over about 1, 1.30. 
I'm coming to get a plate, Sonny. Come in the house, honey. I don't put a, I don't fix the plate ahead of time. Go in there, uh-uh, honey, you want to put one piece of cornbread? I need some more cornbread. So, you know, I'm going to miss those calls, birthday calls, calls to talk about just the gossip, you know, all those things we had. The last time we really shared a moment was right before she passed. That was the hospital that everybody spoke on. I worked for the state. I got in contact by Billy's sister, let me know. I didn't have a clue Alexandra was in the hospital. I left my job to get there. And I didn't care if I lost that job. Do you understand? Because that was my family. But knowing that my job was very supportive, that meant all the world to me. So now we're at the end. And my beginning starts now. There's no more calling on Alexandria. But that piano I can still hear. It's going to always ring in my ear. From the piano teachers that I was taught by Alexandra growing up, I'm going to miss it all. Those are my memories that will forever be with me until I leave this world. So family and friends, keep your head up high. We're going to get through this together. I cried so many nights. When Miss Marshall was singing, I walked a plane, I requested that because that's what I was going through. But it's all right, because joy comes in the morning. Yes, Can I give it an amen? Yes, joy comes in the morning. Yes, we going to be all right. Yes. Alexander going to be all right, because she where we got to go. No more pain. No more sickness. And a brand new body. So y'all continue to pray for me, and I'm going to continue to pray for you. Thank you so much, and I love you. Family and friends from the bottom of my heart. Amen. Amen. Yeah, hold, hold just, hold, hold just a second, hold just a second. We got to read some stuff, and then we're gonna let you sing. Hold on, won't take long. All right, Pastor Greer, Amen. All right. To the to this family, um, beautiful mem memories. I could don't go out to you. I remember Sister Alexander in revival. There's a difference, she made me understand there's a difference between a, a gift and the anointing. Amen. How many know she was an anointed musician? Amen. Amen. She, she made it's a difference between the gift and the anointing. She was, she has stepped beyond the mist that binds us here into a new and larger life. And each of us must go alone. It's all a part of the master's plan. A step on the road to home. To Sister Sandra McQuillan and the family of Miss Alexandra, Alexandra Stevenson. Our hearts were deeply saddened when we learn of the earthly transition of your sister, mother, and loved one. Ms. Alexandra Alexandra Stevenson, our thoughts and prayers are with you during your time of bereavement. We pray for your strength and fortitude to bear this sorrow, which is deep and a loss that is surely great. Continue to look to the hills from whence cometh your strength. Hold tightly to God's unchanging hand. He is too wise to make mistakes and too just to do wrong. Remember that God never fails. Humbly submitted in acknowledgement 
East Coast Community Choir, Barry Smith, musician, director, Melissa Smith, secretary. To Sister Sandra McQuillan and the family of Miss Alexandra Stevenson. We, the Way of Life Ministries church family, send our love and condolence to you in the loss of your love on Miss Alexandra Stevenson. During this difficult time, we commend you to the capable hands of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. God's words reminds, reminds us that he is a very present help. Know that death is not an end, but a transition to a place free of pain and suffering. The word of God reminds us in 2 Timothy 4, 7 through 8. I have fought a good fight, finished the course, I have kept the faith. Henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me on that day, and not to me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing. As you walk through this valley of the shadow of death, find comfort in the sweet memories of your loved one. Know that God has loaned her to you for many years and has now afforded her a home on high. Earth has no sorrow that heaven cannot heal. Sorrowfully submitted, Way of Life Ministries, Wilmington, North Carolina, Overseer Kenneth Quincy, Pastor Myra G. Quincy. Amen. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, because his mercy endureth forever. I call upon the Lord in distress. The Lord answered me and set me in a large place. Psalms 1, 18, 1 and 5. To Sister Sandra McQuillan and family, the members of Ebenezer Missionary Baptist Church family wish to express their deepest sympathy to you upon the passing of your beloved sister, Alexandra Stevenson. God in his wisdom has called her home where she can see her Lord and her Savior face to face. At such a time as this, the Lord has promised to be all that you need him to be. If it is strength to get through your grieving period, he is it. If it's comfort to hand, his is there. If it's peace, he will provide it. Stand trusting in the Lord that he will supply all that you need. The Ebenezer Church family will continue to offer prayers on your behalf. Galatians 6 2 tells us to carry each other burdens, and in this way you will fulfill the law of Christ. We are here to give you the support that you need now and afterwards. May the blessing of the Lord rain down on you. With heartfelt sympathy, Ebenezer, Missionary Baptist Church family, Sharon Jenkins, church clerk, Deacon Alexander Sloan, the third chairman. Amen. Praise the Lord again, somebody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Amen. We do honor our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Yes, sir. My family couldn't help but to remember the early days. She began to learn how to play the piano and, and, and every now and then asked the question, Uncle, show me what you got. And I hit some keys on the piano. It wasn't long after that he was showing, she was showing me what to do because
talent Amen. that God gives us is, is to be used. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen, somebody. Come on. Amen. Yes, sir. And it's evident that blessings have come forth from this, our loved one. It's going on. Sometime back, many years back, my brother Odell, which and he wanted me to convey his condolences, he and his wife, Angela, were on their way here and received a telephone call, urgent call, regarding family members. And we don't know exactly the extent of the emergency. Keep them in your prayers. Yes, sir. They desired to be here, but had to turn back. Amen. But he wrote a song along with my sister some years ago, and mm -hmm. our children a little hesitant to sing it, but they got it. They can cover the bases. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Amen. Right. Uh, said, life must go on. Yeah, yeah. Bonnie asked us to sing this song, and we're going to do our best. All right. Amen. You know going to do it? Yes, sir. If Odell was here, he would say, sometime yeah, you want to take the bite out of say, even though you parted, you'll be still in our mind. You know what, church? Well, life must go on. Can we say it again? Sometime you won't. church will life must go on. let me say this verse here yes, sir. consider the man who bared the cross yeah. on Calvary he died you and me oh, 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 oh. but even on the third day he rose from the darkest grave and he did that so that life can go but let me say this, listen. Well, but when my Savior rose from the dark yes, grave, I would like just to look upon his face. Do you know what I'll be doing? Beholding all the power, he knows all about us, so that life can go on. One more time, yeah. Oh, oh, oh. I want to take. Though you parted, you 
still be in our minds. So you know what, church? <laughs> Life can grow. We give our honor and praise to God, who is the head of my life, to our presider, friend and brother, Pastor Massey, to all the pastors, ministers of the gospel that are present with us today. To the officers and members of the Lowndes Hill Baptist Church family, to all of you, my brothers and sisters in Christ, especially to this family, Stevenson family, we greet you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We pray God's blessings upon all of you. Before we get into the message, let me do this, if you would please. I would like to acknowledge these pastors that are here others that are in the congregation, all minute pastors and ministers, would you please stand just for a moment? We want to acknowledge your presence. Those of you that are here, thank you all of you so much for being here, sharing and supporting with this family. Second house cleaning I want to do is to the members of Lowndes Hill. If you have not already received the word, I do need to uh, make mention to you with everything that's going on uh, today we will not have prayer service this evening just wanted to sister Duckett our secretary has already sent a text out but just in case you did not get it uh, please pass the word on Amen. I want to thank you family this family for thinking enough of me to stand here today and share with you the word of God now, anyone who knows me know that I don't deal or dwell on the departed. Amen. I have come to talk to you that are still living. Yes, the departed life is over, yes, good or bad. Whether you agreed or disagreed, whether you were a friend or enemy, the life is over. But God has a word for the living. Amen. With that being said, I want to call your attention to Mark's gospel, chapter 13, verses 32 through 37. The word of God says, but of that day and hour, no man, no one knows, neither the angels in heaven, nor the son, but only the father. Take heed, watch, and pray. For you do not know when the time is. It is like a man going to a far country left his house and gave authority to his servants and to each his work and commanded the doorkeeper to watch watch therefore for you do not know when the master of the house is coming in the evening at midnight at the crowing of the rooster or in the morning 
lest coming suddenly he find you sleeping. And what I say to you, I say to all, watch. I want to use as a thought for today, a call to watch. A call to watch. When death comes, it is always a shock and a surprise. Even when we are expecting it and know that we all will have to pass here one day, it still shocks us. It bothers us when death comes. Now, much has been said already. So we're going to deal with what God wants us to know. The funeral service is a time to remember and reflect back on the life of the deceased and what part they played in our life. But my brothers and sisters, it is also a time to remind us who are still among the living that we too have to pass this way. So as we talk about a call to watch, what does it mean? What does it mean? What does it mean? First of all, what does it mean to watch as a Christian? You see, we got to remember, my brothers and sisters, we are servants of the king. And so when we talk about a call to watch, it, it, it's saying that we must not forget that we are Christians. Yes, sir. Right. Amen. What you mean by that, preacher? I mean, we ought to know that you belong to the Lord. Yeah, that's right. Amen. You ought, you ought to know who you belong to. And, and God is just simply saying that you need to be watchful that you know that you belong to him and that you are following in his direction. Yes, Lord. Not only that, it means that we must not, we must not fail to strive after holiness. Mm, that's right. Don't, 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 don't fail to strive. What you mean, preacher? We ought to walk with the Lord. I, 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 my mind, and I don't know why, the last few service, couple of services I've been in, somebody made mention, and the Lord put it right here in my notes as well, uh, how Enoch walked with God. He walked, yes, sir. And the word says that he had a testimony that pleased God. What you're saying, preacher, for us to understand what it means to watch, it means that we need to know who we are in Christ Jesus. And we ought to have a testimony that pleases God. Which is, we cannot live any kind of life and expect to please God. You got to watch. Yes, sir. You must not, and in your watching, please, brothers and sisters, don't be ungrateful to God for his goodness. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And the only thing I'm saying about that is you need to give thanks to God. You need to realize that you didn't get this far on your own. Yes, sir. You need to realize that it was not you that woke yourself up this morning. It was not an alarm clock. I don't care who, how, many, how many you got in the room, how many times you said it and hit the snooze button. It was not the clock that woke you up. Someone made mention a while ago about being about having COVID, and I'm sure there are some others in this building that has dealt with COVID. I got news to tell you, it was not the doctors that brought you through COVID. You see, we need to realize that it is God that is orchestrating everything. And so therefore, we need to be watchful how we carry ourselves and we need to praise the Lord. Stop praising one another. Stop praising man and lift up the name of Jesus. And then uh, another thing we talk about what it means to watch as a child of God, it means that we must not rely upon our own knowledge. You see, some of y'all think that y'all are all that in a bag of chips just because you went to college. 
I don't care whether you call me Dr. Brantley, Reverend Brantley, or just call me Dean or Edward, whatever you call Just call me a child of God. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's what I'm talking about. You see, the word said, the words, I, you see, I just got to stay with the word, y'all. The word says, trust in the Lord. Uh -huh. With all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. That just simply tell me it's not about me. It's about lifting up the name of Jesus. So as this call to watch goes out, we got to know what it means to us as Christians. Then my brothers and sisters, we need to heed to the call. Yes, sir. We need to heed. You see, some of us have heard calls, but we have not heeded to the call. Oh, I, I know I can get some we, uh, uh, witnesses up here and need preachers. When God called you to preach, you ran. God wanted to elevate you, but you wanted to stay where you was at. You ran and hid and tried to get away, but God kept calling. And see, when God keep calling, you got to heed to the call. Why you got to heed to the call, preacher? Uh, because of the repeated warnings from God. God is simply saying in everyday life, he just simply saying, get right with God and do it now. He's warning us day after day. Somebody, you see, is not as young as they used to be. I can contest to that because I now I can't hardly see a thing without glasses. My grandkids laugh at me when they get ready to show myself where are my glasses. But but see, we that's a warning. God is warning me. Let me know the time is not as long as it used to be. He said, "Get right with God." And do it now. Then he says, Seek you first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. We got to do it now, church. We got to heed to the call of God. Why? Because he's repeatedly warning us that he's coming back one day. Yeah, not only that, we got to heed to the call because of the constant temptation to sin. I don't care who you are, I don't care what family you belong to. All of us are tempted by sin. All of us, pulpit included, we are tempted. And so because of the constant temptation of sin, we got to remember who we are. We got to remember that we belong to the Lord. So we need to heed to this call because of the repeated warnings, because of the constant temptation of sin, because of our weak and wavering hearts. Right. Yes, sir. Yeah, we are weak, but God is strong. Yes, sir. We are feeble, but he's able yes, to keep sir. us. Yes, right. So we got to heed to the call. Yes, sir. Not only that, we must heed to the call because of uncertainty of the hour of death. Yes, sir. The word teaches us that we know not the day or hour. When death shall come, uh, so we must be ready. We got to get ready, church. I heard somebody say, this is the dressing room. That we need to get ready for that day. Because Jesus is coming back. I looked at this word this, in, this, in this scripture here today as to what God was trying to say. He just simply saying, watch and pray. That's right. I looked down through it. It tells a story. He said that of that day and hour that no one knows, neither the angels in heaven yes, sir. Yes, nor the son talking about Jesus himself, yes, but only God the father. Yes, he said, you see, it's like uh, a master that went away for a period of time yes, yes. and uh, he left instructions with his servants. Yes, to work and serve until he returned. But he said, now I, I, I need you to know that I'm leaving right now. And I need for you to take care of matters around here. Uh, but he said uh, the master didn't tell him when he was coming back. He just told them to be ready. Uh, the word said that he told them to work and serve. And then he told the doorkeeper to watch. He said, watch, therefore, for you do not know when the master of the house is coming. I don't know when 
uh, Jesus is coming back. But I just come by today to tell your family, you better be ready. You better watch uh, because the word of God is for each and every one of us. How do you know, preacher? Uh, because in the 37th verse of the passage that we read, it is said, and what I say to you, I say to all. Uh, and he said, watch. watch I want to know, is anybody watching? He said, to each of us, uh, you need to watch. Uh, regardless of your age, uh, young uh, or old, uh, you need to watch. Uh, regardless of your sex, uh, male or female, uh, you better watch. Uh, regardless of your occupation, uh, I don't care what job you have, uh, you better watch. Uh, regardless of your position uh, in church or in the community, uh, you better watch. Uh, we all uh, must watch uh, the word says uh, watch you therefore uh, you know not when uh, the master of the house uh, shall return uh, i don't know when he's coming back uh, it might be in the evening uh, it might be at midnight uh, it might be in the crow at the crowing of the rooster uh, it might be in the morning uh, but i want to let you know uh, i don't want him uh, to find me sleeping. Uh, I got work to do. Uh, I got to serve him uh, until I die. Uh, I want to ask your family uh, and friends uh, as I take my seat. Uh, do you know the man, uh, the man from Galilee? Uh, do you know him? Uh, if you know him, say yeah. Uh, do you know him? Uh, and let me tell you what he done for me. Uh, he me up uh, and he turned me around. Uh, I want to tell you, uh, he placed my feet uh, on solid ground. Uh, I don't know what he done for you, uh, but when I was on my sick bed, uh, he picked me up. Uh, he brought me back uh, to where I need to be. Uh, I come by to tell you, uh, God is still calling. Uh, he's calling on you uh, to get right. Uh, he's calling on you uh, to serve him. Uh, He's calling on you to praise his name. Can you praise him? Can you praise him? Has it been good to you? Did he wake you up? Did he keep you day by day? Can you praise him? Can you acknowledge who he is? Has he done anything for you? He's a lily of the valley. He's a bridge of a of water. He marched at Golgotha Hill, bled and died on an old rugged cross, buried in a bar tomb but early 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 on sunday morning he got up he got up he got up the call is going out the call is going out god is just simply saying don't worry about this life. This life is over. But you better look at how you living. You better look at what you're saying. You better look at how you're treating one another. Jesus is coming back one day. I don't know when. One of these old days. Yeah, he's coming back. Get right with God and do it now. There's a call to watch. He's coming back. Will you be ready? Will you be ready? It's up to you. I'm going to ask Pastor Brian if he'll come and give us a closing prayer. family God has spoken through his man today and he has rendered to us what thus says the Lord he has compelled us to watch watch but I must challenge you now not only to watch but to listen let us go to the Lord 
in prayer. Lord, we uh, lift up our voices to you. Thanking you, O oh Lord, for this day. We thank you right now for the blessings of the life that has been lived out in Sister Alexandria. Lord, we thank you right now for the family sharing and allowing us to be with them in this time right now. But Lord, as you have asked us to watch, I now ask them to listen. Because God says that when we call on him in times such as these, that he would be diligently and faithful to answer our cries. The Bible says that we have not because we ask not. So if you are looking for peace, if you are looking for rest, and you are looking for comfort, give all these things unto the Lord. To this family, Lord, right now we know that you don't know what to say and how to feel. But just believe that it is okay because God will never leave you nor forsake you. To the family and to the friends that have gathered here today, may God bless each and every one of you. May God use each and every one of us to strengthen them. Lift them up and pray for them when they find themselves in need. Lord, we thank you, O Lord, for this life. We thank you, O Lord, for this opportunity. And we thank you, O Lord, for this hour. It's in Christ Jesus' holy, perfect, and precious name that we do pray. Amen. Amen and amen.